Are you looking for a way to make your old MacBook Pro run faster? If so, maybe you should think about switching out the hard drive. Inside of this video, I'm going to show you the before and after results of switching out the hard drive in my 2015 MacBook Pro. Let's get into it. All right, so switching out the hard drive in your MacBook Pro isn't going to make it into a 2019 or a 2020 model, but it can make an amazing difference when it comes to performance. So just some background, this MacBook Pro is a 2015, mid-2015 model, 15 inch, and specced out when I bought it. Now, I love this computer. I love that it has no butterfly keyboard, so I don't have to worry about keys always breaking. I love that it has no touch bar, so I have actual buttons to turn the volume on and off. And the thing I love the very most about it is the ports. I have two USB ports, an SD port, and two Thunderbolt ports, plus a headphone jack. That means I don't have to carry dongles everywhere I go. And so this for me is the main reason I haven't actually even upgraded to a new MacBook, because this actually does everything so well, and the new MacBooks, I just feel like there's so many compromises. But the problem is, this thing is running a little bit slower than I would like. And so, I figured I would try switching out the hard drive because I heard about these guys at OWC who are creating a new hard drive that you can switch your Mac hard drive with. And apparently, it uses technology that is way newer, being 2019 and 2020, rather than the 2015 models. So it allows more storage, faster transfer speeds, and basically a better experience for a very reasonable price, a couple hundred bucks. So I decided to reach out to them and they said, hey, you can actually have one, check it out for free. And I was like, free? That sounds great. We'll give it a test. So I took the hard drive, I put it in here, plugged in, did all the tests, and I'm going to run you through the difference, kind of walk you through exactly what's involved in doing that, and then talk about the results. Okay, let's do it. Now, in order to open up your Mac, you'll need a Mac-specific screwdriver. It's called a Pentalope screwdriver, and the size you want is T5. I recommend just picking up a kit like this. I recently purchased this one and was very happy with it. I'll leave the link in the description below if you want to check that out. The inside of your Mac is likely dusty, so I'd recommend a can of compressed air as well as some isopropyl alcohol to wipe down the motherboard. Now, once you actually get that Pentalope screwdriver, you can open up your Mac. It's pretty simple here. Just make sure to keep track of where the screws go because the two screws in the back of your Mac are actually shorter than the rest. So I just like to draw a little diagram here and place the screws on top of the corresponding places so I remember where everything goes. That's just a little trick you can use when you're taking these kind of things apart. Now, once the cover is off, you can see there's a ton of dust. So I'm just going to lean this MacBook up against my wall. I'm going to blow out one side, flip it over, blow out the other side, and clean this case out with the isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel. Now, one thing I really love about the OWC drives is they come with installation videos. So you can just watch the video. It walks you through step-by-step, step, taking the Mac apart, disconnecting the battery, removing your old hard drive, and inserting the new hard drive into the same slot. So I just went through, I watched it from start to finish, and it even tells you which tools you're going to need, which is super helpful, and walks you through putting the Mac back together. So after I'd finished that, it was my turn to have a go. Now, theoretically, this whole thing is super simple. You take one screw out of the Mac, you remove the hard drive, and then you slot in the new hard drive. And so far, so good, right? It came out pretty easy. You can see there's some dust in there that I cleaned out. I grabbed my new hard drive, and I went to slot it in to this chamber. Now, this is where things got a little bit tricky, because what OWC doesn't mention is that the hard drive is very, very hard to fit into this little space. You can see that I'm just messing with it, trying to force it without forcing it too hard. I didn't want to damage it or break it. In the end, I actually thought it was in there once, screwed it in, put the whole Mac back together, started it up, only to find out that the drive wasn't in all the way, so I had to take the entire computer apart again, only to make sure that I actually pushed the hard drive in far enough. You can tell that it's in all the way once the mounting screw is completely revealed. You won't know what I'm talking about until you see it yourself, but basically you just need to shove that thing for all your worth into the hard drive slot without damaging it, of course. Now in the process, I even found out that the original screwdriver I started with, the bit had stripped, and so I switched to my new screwdriver for the rest of this, put it back together, and theoretically I was done. Now I pressed the power button and waited. And as you can see, nothing Happen. So make sure that you go ahead and press the power button, but hold it down for a couple of seconds. And after a second or two, you might be greeted, like me, with the question mark folder of death. And this is nothing to be concerned about. It just means there's nothing on the hard drive right now, and your Mac is saying, what is going on? So what you need to do is actually boot up the Mac in recovery mode. So in theory, this was actually all I had to do. I plugged in my hard drive with my time machine backup. 
and I pressed the power button and held down command R. Now this is one thing that I really wish that OWC did better is provide some documentation with the purchase that said, hey, you need to do this, or at least, hey, here's the link to the video showing you how to do this, because I had to look this up by myself, and it kind of freaked me out for a little bit. So anyways, what you do is you hold down command R, you can see that the Mac is booting, and it is just using the internet to download a kind of temporary system in order to back up or install a new OS or whatever it is that you need it to do. So that'll take 5, 10, 15 minutes, it doesn't really matter. And once that is finished, you can navigate to your Time Machine backup, and it will recover the entire thing and basically clone it onto your new hard drive. In theory, very, very simple. So I went ahead into my Time Machine backups, I selected the backup I needed, and bam, it started to back up. Now, in theory, that's what happened, but in reality, what I figured out was there was no destination drive for me to clone my backup onto. That meant that I actually hadn't pushed that little SSD far enough into the slot, so I had to take my entire Mac apart, after shutting it down, of course, and take that SSD and push it into that stupid slot and do this whole process a second time around. Once I'd done this, I went and started up the Mac again, holding Command R, and this time it loaded just fine. So I was able to select the hard drive that I was supposed to back up onto, and I was able to select my Time Machine backup. However, here's where things got nasty again. When I actually selected that backup and put it on my Mac, everything seemed good. It started copying the files over, and I came back three hours later, and it had finally finished. The problem was that when I actually went to boot the Mac, it got to about here on the booting screen, and it would pause for hours and not do anything. I tried restarting the Mac, I tried booting it several different times, to no avail whatsoever. Eventually, I figured out that actually for this hard drive to be supported by Mac, you have to switch to Mojave. So I had to update my operating system before I was able to actually restore the Mac and have it start up. So this was very frustrating and took me about an entire day without my computer just messing around trying to get it to work. And that was definitely the worst part about this experience and something that OWC didn't mention. They did mention you had to have at least operating system High Sierra in order to do this update. However, they never mentioned that you need to switch to Mojave. So for anyone out there who is not on Mojave yet and doesn't want to be, I would not recommend the OWC drives. I would make sure that you get something that is supported on High Sierra. So with all that out of the way, I was finally able to do some tests. Here is the hard drive speed before. You can see that things are hovering right around 530 megabytes a second for write speed and a read speed of 1800 megabytes per second. Now let's take a look at the new hard drive. As you can see, the write speeds are now almost four times faster at 2200 megabytes a second and read speeds are substantially faster as well. Hopping over to Nova Bench, comparing the tests tells a slightly different story, however, because even though our hard drive is now substantially faster, the actual real-world performance increase is not as substantial because the CPU doesn't work as well with a non-Apple calibrated hard drive. But the test results really aren't that important. What actually matters is real-world performance. So what I went ahead and did is I exported 100 photos before and after the hard drive switch. The old hard drive finished in a solid 2 minutes 57 seconds, while the new drive took 2 minutes and 17 seconds, so we had a solid increase there. Overall, that's an increase of 22.6% in speed. So all in all, am I happy with the Switch? Of course I am. Any increase is an increase when it comes to performance, and my Mac, after switching that hard drive out, is 22.6% faster at exporting photos. And that is a big deal when you're exporting thousands of photos or exporting different videos makes a huge difference. Now when you couple that with actually changing out the thermal paste while you're inside of this Mac, I saw another 9% increase in export speed. Now if you don't know what thermal paste is, it's stuff that just helps in the heat dissipation of your GPU and your CPU. I did a video on it, a quick tutorial, it's super easy, it takes 10 bucks worth of thermal paste and about 15 minutes time. You can switch that out and in total after doing that and the hard drive, I saw a 32% increase in export speed. Now that is a huge, huge increase when it comes to just a couple hundred bucks spent and what a couple hours worth of time rather than buying a brand new MacBook Pro I'm pretty happy with that now if you're not technical you don't like messing around with backing up hard drives and whatever is this worth it mm, you have to decide for yourself but I do guarantee you're going to see a huge increase in speed and hopefully be able to use your Mac a little bit longer without needing to upgrade it so if this video was helpful for you please do me a favor hit that like button below make sure to subscribe leave a comment if you have questions I will try to answer them as best I can and until next time, I will see you later. Take care.